And this piece of uh, rock art has been um, reproduced in several books, uh, most recently um, a book by Terry Wilson called The Secret History of Crop Circles. And this is a kind of facsimile copy. It makes it obviously a lot easier to, to, to look at the different elements when it's been copied into a painting like this. Um, I suppose the most striking feature is this, um, what can only be described as a spaceman. Um, it's obviously got you know, some kind of space helmet thing there. Um, there's some kind of, some kind of bulbous point on his head. And then he seems to be looking in the direction of this kind of aeriform shape that seems to be floating in the air. Um, now, in the center, uh, you have a, a shape there that could easily be uh, interpreted as a flying saucer. There's also these round spherical uh, shapes. Um, these are often found, actually. These round spherical motifs are often found in relationship to other motifs that can easily be uh, interpreted as flying saucers. Um, there seems to be some kind of wave pattern there. Obviously, that could be, you know, birds in the distance, but it seems to me that that, that sort of suggests uh, some kind of wave energy. And <clears throat> fleeing from the spaceman and this aeriform and these spheres and this UFO are wallabies or kangaroos. And what's really fascinating is that um, in the lower right-hand corner, there are two figures, a man and a woman, which do not have Aboriginal facial features. In actual fact, they have European features. And this mirrors exactly what we find on the other side of planet Earth, where we have um, characters in rock art from you know thousands of years ago, centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries ago, um, with people with European features. Well, in Kimberley in Australia, um, in the ancient era from where all of this rock art uh, dates from, there should have been no European people uh, at all. And the same thing can be said about uh, Central and South America. In Central and South America, these um, beings which we find in the ancient art in that particular part of the planet are called the Viracocha. And they were uh, beings who came from the stars and gave the peoples of Central and South America knowledge of uh, mathematics and astronomy and other forms of knowledge. And here in Kimberley, in Western Australia, in an ancient era when there shouldn't have been any European people whatsoever, we again find this kind of theme of European looking beings. Um, and he has a beard, he has a kind of a punky kind of uh, 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 kind of Sex Pistols, Johnny Rotten haircut. The woman has a very strange hair design that looks like some kind of m medieval jester's hat, which is very strange. Um, and the look on their faces is that of, of awe and terror. They're even sort of holding up their, their hands, either in veneration of this spaceman or in horror of the spaceman. Now, What's really fascinating is that on the ground, below the flying saucer and the spheres, you have a, a spiral pattern, which is quite reminiscent of the spiral groove workings which we find in Ireland and Scotland on, on lots of the monoliths there. But this spiral pattern seems to be drawn in a kind of perspective way, and I think it suggests that there is a crop circle there. And of course, we know that there are many, many pieces of footage of small balls of light actually creating crop circles. And this may uh, be one of the most important pieces of evidence in the whole area of crop circle research. Now, um, another really very, very interesting point that I find is that the entire scene is encircled by 
a serpent by a snake. This is the head of the snake and it goes all the way around and his tail is almost being swallowed. Now the the, the snake, um, you know, in a lot of books, I collect a hell of a lot of books, um, mostly the snake is considered as a symbol of wisdom in the ancient era. Um, and, you know, I thought, well, when I first came across this notion years ago, <clears throat> I thought, well, that's, you know, quite interesting. But, you know, when I look at snakes and I live in, in, a, in a hot area where there, there are snakes, um, they don't particularly strike me as being really, really super intelligent animals. Um, certainly they have a vindictive kind of uh, survival uh, quality of intelligence, but they don't strike me as being like dolphins, which, are, you know, when you swim with dolphins, you can really, really tell that they're very, very, very intelligent uh, creatures. And so I did some reading and research into how this notion of the snake representing wisdom and knowledge in the ancient world came about. And my research really led me to, um, you know, make this film in a way, because what I found is that it wasn't actually snakes that were venerated as being intelligent. It was the reptilian aspect to their being that was associated with reptilian or serpent-like creatures in the legendary histories of planet Earth, characters like Quetzalcoatl in Mexico that brought the civilizations of uh, Central and South America, you know, fantastic knowledge about the stars, and other reptilian beings, uh, such as Nu Kua, which was a reptilian goddess in ancient China, it was this notion that these reptilian beings that came from the stars, full of knowledge, genetics and science, which then was oversimplified and throughout history came down to the point where the snake represents wisdom of the ancient world.